All right, hello everybody, and on to our next lesson, which is talking about cross-sectional volume. So by this point in Unit 5, our application for integrals, we should be able to find the area between two curves, whether it is top minus bottom or left minus right. Okay, and that's going to help us lead into our first um, uh, volume type of problem. Okay. Now, I got a warm-up here, and it's actually the warm-up that is from your homework the previous night, so you might have already done this, but this is a problem I like to do with you, and I will save for in class time, so I recommend at least reviewing over that so we can move right along, but let's go ahead and jump into today's notes. Okay, so this, so we've learned area between two curves, now we're just going to start talking about volume, and the first thing, we, the first idea we talk about is something called cross-sectional volume. Well, um, I think it's important first to understand exactly what a cross-section is, right? So um, what you're probably used to, to hearing in terms of cross-sections is uh, the cross-sections of a cone, uh, or, or another way of saying that is conic sections. And for my kiddos uh, last semester and during the pandemic, I'm not sure if you got the conic sections, and if you didn't, it does not hurt you in the slightest. Um, but that's, I'm just giving you an example of what you've heard of cross sections. I mean, it, it, it's exactly what the name implies it is when you take a section or, or a, or a two dimensional plane and cut through a third dimension, right? So if, uh, if I were to cut like right here, for instance, okay, if I were to cut slice right through that edge of it, um, it looks like we have like a, a parabola looking shape, or like right here, if we were to cut at this angle right here, it, it, the cross section would be an ellipse. Or if I were to cross right here, the, the cross section would be a circle. I always tell students, think about what happens when you take a, a cake, a birthday cake, and you cut it right down the middle. Well, the, the two-dimensional shape of the cross section, that's, that's a cross section. And usually it's um, some type of like rectangular looking shape for a, a, uh, a cake, right? If you have a rectangular cake and you cut down the middle, it makes a, a rectangular shape, right? That's, that's all a cross section is. Um, another example I use for cross section is, is usually if I'm in class, I take a, like a ream of paper, 500 sheets, ream of paper, and uh, I take one sheet, all right? I, 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 I've lifted up right here in the middle, and I take one of those sheets of paper out. That sheet of paper that I just took out, that's technically called a cross section. Okay, so that's kind of my idea that I try to show you visually. Okay. All right, well, how does, how does a, a two-dimensional cross-section, how does that equate to volume? Well, let's, let's talk about it, okay? Um, the volumes of parallel cross-sections, that's exactly what we're talking about here. So it says, let S be a solid. Let S be a solid that lies between X equals A and X equals B. Um, and if the cross-sectional area of S, okay, in the plane P through X and perpendicular to the X-axis is A of X. Now, I know this description of A of X right here, the area of S in the plane through X and perpendicular to the, I know that's a very complicated sounding explanation of what A of X is, but it, I promise you once we like start to draw it, and visualize it, it's going to make total sense, I think. Um, the goal is to create this A of X equation, okay, where A is a continuous function, and if that's true, then the volume is as such. So here we have it written as a limit, okay, and all this limit is saying is that we're adding up the infinite amount of cross sections, and if I add up, think about that ream of paper, right, that's why I really like using that example of the, of the ream of paper that I did before. If I have this ream of paper right here, um, and I take a, a sheet of paper off the top, right? Well, that sheet of paper is, doesn't have volume to it. It's two-dimensional. But what if I stack all those 500 sheets of paper? Then do I not have a third-dimensional volume? Okay, that's what this formula is saying right here. It's saying, okay, we're going to add up the infinite amount of cross-sections between the top and the bottom. Uh, and another way of saying that is to integrate, which means to add up a bunch of values, okay, like we did with the Riemann sum. So there you go. It's just going to be an integral process. 
Okay, well, hopefully you have a little bit of an idea of what a cross-section is. I want to do a few examples. Um, but before I do, um, I think the biggest, hard some, the biggest thing that's hard sometimes is to be able to uh, visualize what a, a three-dimensional looks like, especially since we only have to be able to draw on a two-dimension. Khan Academy does an excellent job of, of sketching that out, and he, he does a really good example in this link right here, which I've also put on Canvas. So I highly recommend you watching that uh, in your own time. Okay, but now enough explanation. Let's uh, let's try our best to kind of go through an example, draw it out, and, and I'll show you the, the steps that I like to follow. And it, it's pretty similar to the steps that I like to think of for um, uh, optimization. But anyway, okay. The equation x equals y squared plus two, and the line y equals six forms the base of a solid. The cross sections of the solid are squares, so we got cross sections are squares, sitting on the base and are perpendicular to the x-axis. Find the volume of the solid. Okay, first things first is just like how we did like top minus bottom uh, area between two curves and left minus or right minus left um, area between two curves. The same thing is going to happen with cross sections. It's either going to be top minus bottom or left minus right. That's why we learned that lesson first. So the idea first is to, is to always try to identify which way we're going. And I'll tell you, it's all based off of this line right here. If it's perpendicular to the x-axis, if my base is perpendicular to the x-axis, um, that means we're, we have a line going up and down. That's perpendicular to the x-axis, right? And if it's perpendicular to the x-axis, they're going from the top of some function to the bottom of some function. So this is what I would call a top minus bottom problem. And I like to take a second to always label that and uh, make sure that we understand that we're dealing with a dx equation. Okay, everything's going to be in terms of x. So that's the first thing I always like to identify. Okay? Now I'm going to try my best to really uh, label the steps as I go uh, to make sure we are all set. Okay. Um, the idea, and you don't have to write this every time, but the idea is to create this equation right here, okay, which from our last slide, okay, that is our formula. So I just rewrote the formula right here. So all we're trying to do is create a integral of an area, and it's going to find um, the, uh, the that cross-sectional volume. So let's build this up. Number one is I like to go ahead and sketch my graph. Now, I got two functions here that I'm sketching, x equals y squared plus 2 and x equals 6. So first things first is uh, I would probably get y by itself in this equation to kind of help me uh, help me graph it. So let's do that. So that's just, um, uh, let's see, y uh, equals plus or minus the square root of x minus 2. So all I did was just subtract 2 and take the square root. So plus or minus the square root of x minus 2. Now how that looks, and we know, it, so if I did the positive square root of 2, I know it looks like this. Over 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's the square root function. And the negative square root of x minus 2 is the same function but negative. So it looks like this. Okay. And an x equals y squared equation is just a, uh, a parabola on its side. So um, it says that we got that equation and we got the equation uh, x equals 6, which looks like this. Okay, So that those two equations form the base of the solid. So I'm going to outline the base of my solid, of my three-dimensional figure. Whatever my three-dimensional figure is, this is the base of it. Okay? Can't, I can't highlight that enough. Okay. Now, so like, I mean, picture something resting on your desk. This is the base of it. Okay? Now, this is the hard part, is try to imagine, like, the three dimension is coming out of your screen. It's coming out at you. And what's coming out at you is a bunch of cross sections that are squares. So, for instance, I'll, draw, I'll try to draw this in maybe blue. Like, if I were to cut it down this line right here, there's a square that's coming out. Try to picture this as a three-dimensional square coming out. Like, for instance, if I were to cut vertically, which is what we're doing, uh, the, the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis, and so I'm going from top to bottom. Try to imagine this square is coming out. Okay. And maybe like right here at the very end, like right there is a square 
that is coming out. Try to picture these three-dimensional squares that are coming out of your screen. Okay, well, so those are all the correct cross-sections. Now, if I take the infinite amount of cross-sections, eventually I'm going to have some type of shape. I'm trying to outline it a little bit here. Some type of shape that kind of makes this and I'm not very good at sketching. I'm trying so hard. Okay, well, anyway, we have this, uh, this three-dimensional. I'm trying to shade a little bit to show you. It's not, I'm not doing the best job in the world. Khan Academy does a way better job. But trying to picture this three-dimensional figure coming out with the cross-sections being these squares. Okay. All right, well, this is how it works. Since we know it's going to be top minus bottom because the base of the squares is going from the top of the function to the bottom of the function. That's what it says. Um, I would say that your next step after drawing the picture and trying to identify that, uh, what the figure looks like, is step two is I would try to write out a generic uh, area equation. And in this case, that generic area equation for my cross section is just a square. So area of a square equals sine squared. Okay. Now, then the idea is we want to turn this into an A of X equation so we can integrate it. So if I want to turn this to an A of X equation, I've got to get it in terms of, um, of X. Right now it's in terms of S. So if I want it in terms of X, okay, then the side of my uh, squares that are going from top to bottom here depend on where it's positioned at on this function. Okay? So I told you it's going to be top minus bottom. Well, if I want to know the length at any given point of my cross section, it's going to be the point at the top of the function, which is the square root of x minus 2. Um, and the distance from that to the bottom of a function is going to be negative square root of x minus 2. So if I subtract negative square root of x minus 2, then that gives me the length of my side depending on where my cross section is at. So I'm going to do that as my s value squared. Okay. Now, just to simplify it a little bit, this is going to be 2 square root of x minus 2 because plus positive squared. Okay. So that is my A equation in terms of x. Okay. So if I want to know the cross-sectional volume of this three-dimensional figure, I'm going to do the integration okay, of 2x minus 2 squared. What that's going to do is it's going to add up these infinite amount of cross sections. And here I'm trying to like draw out. I'm going to try to draw it. It kind of looks like this. And here's this like three dimensional figure. Can you can you can you picture it a little bit there? Here's kind of like one of the cross sections here, and it's kind of it's kind of making this cross sectional shape. I'm trying so hard. Okay. All right. Well, anyway. Um, if I were to integrate all of the cross-sectional areas, it's going to add them all up and give me a three-dimensional volume. Now, the farthest left I ever go is all the way over here at 2, and the farthest right I ever go is all the way to 6. So if I can just integrate that and solve, I'll have my volume. So I think the hardest part with these problems is visualizing it and then maybe trying to create your area equation in terms of x. After that point, it's just integrating, okay? So let's integrate this a little bit. And I'm going to uh, have to select it and move it to the other page. Ah. Okay, so we're going to integrate it. Okay. Um, before I integrate it, I probably want to simplify it down just a little bit. In fact, I can distribute the squared, and I got that volume equals the integration 2 to 6 of 4 times uh, x minus 2 dx. And in fact, I can actually bring this 4 out. So volume equals 4 integral 2 to 6 of x minus 2 dx. So uh, if, if I'm still labeling these steps, I, I kind of want to go back here. Step two is to create that A generic equation. Uh, I would call step three substituting in my variable X, getting it in terms of X. And then uh, step four would be to integrate that. 
simplify and integrate that. So I would call this right here what we're doing step four. Okay. Well, anyway, the integration is not too terrible. Uh, integration of x is one half x squared. Integration of uh, two is two x, and we're evaluating from two to six. Okay. So um, just to do that real quick, that's four. I'm going to have one half six squared. Oh, you can't see that. Sorry. Uh, minus 2 times 6, and I'm going to take that entire quantity and subtract 1 half 2 squared uh, minus 2 times 2. Now, if you were to simplify this out, I got that it equals uh, 32 units cubed, okay? That's the volume of my cross-sectional uh, three-dimensional figure, okay? All right, now I think the hardest part is to visualize that. That's why I, um, since I'm not there in person, I attached that Khan Academy video. Hopefully that will be able to help you visualize it a little bit. But uh, let's try to do maybe two more examples if we can. Okay. All right, look. So I'm going to try to go through those steps again. Uh, it says the equation of y equals the sine of x and the line y equals 0 forms the base of a solid whose uh, from 0 to 2 pi. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just draw out the base. Maybe let's go ahead and do step one here. We'll draw out the base, okay? So we're looking at, at, at sine between 0 and 2 pi. So um, I'm just going to make that pretty quick. We should know how to, um, maybe I'll do it like this. I'll do... Uh, Okay, there we go. There, there's sine of x. I mean, it's, it's um, if we go up one, we go down to negative one. I'm just trying to, to expand it out a little bit. But there's my sine of x graph. We know how to graph that between zero and two pi. And it's also formed by the line y equals zero. So it looks like this. Okay. So imagine like that this, this three-dimensional figure is resting on your desk. And the base of it is this weird little shape here. And try to imagine like the, a three-dimension something popping out of the screen at you, okay? Like if this is sitting on your desk, okay, this is your, your base on your desk, there's a three, third dimension coming out at you. Now, the next part is pretty important. The cross-sections of the solid are semicircles and are perpendicular to the x-axis. So if this is my x-axis, perpendicular is up minus bottom. So I'm always going to write that first. This is a top minus bottom equation. Therefore, everything's going to be in terms of x. So what this means is, if I were to uh, draw the cross sections, let's say I took a knife and I, I cut it vertically, that's perpendicular to the x-axis, the shape is going to be some semicircle looking thing. So there's a semicircle. That's ugly, I'm sorry. But like if I were to cut right here, there's a semicircle. Okay. So and if I were to cut like right here, this would be a semicircle. Okay, there, there are semicircles. Those are vertically coming out at you. If I were to sketch this, and I actually don't want to do that. I don't want to take up space and try to do more than I need to. Um, but uh, anyway, oh well. The point is, is, is there's going to be some type of... Uh, curved looking third dimensional figure I'm trying to draw that poking out at you but i'm not doing a great job but that's okay all right so step one is we kind of drew so we know it's going top to minus bottom so that's good so step two i would say is we're trying to create that a of x equation so let's just start with a here in step two we got to create an a equation okay well it's always the area of the cross section in this case it's a semicircle so that would be one-half pi r squared. That's the area of the semicircle. Now, we're trying to turn this into an a of x equation so we can integrate this. So in step three, we're trying to get this in terms of x, which in this case is in terms of r. So what is r? Well, r is the radius of one of these semicircles. So let's say I'm looking at this semicircle right here in red. The radius is going to be um, half of that line. 
So how I write that line is since I'm going from the top of the function to a bottom of the function, and actually let's look at the uh, this left part of the graph that I've kind of highlighted in purple. The top of the function is sine of x. So if I want to talk about the, the radius, I'm going to take the difference from the top of the function to the bottom of the function. So in this case, um, that would be, um, so let me write the one half of pi. The radius is going to be the top, which is sine of x minus zero. Okay, sine of x minus zero. And then divide that by two, because if I did sine of x minus zero, that's the diameter, but I'm only doing half that length. So there you go. Okay. So all I did was rewrite the radius in terms of uh, x. So it's the difference between the top of the function to the bottom of the function. Uh, and then I divided it by two because it's the radius. And that's squared. So there is my area equation in terms of x. Now, then I would say step four would be to integrate that and then go on with your life. Okay. So this is going to be the integral of, and I'm going to simplify this down a little bit. Um, I'm going to distribute the squared. So that's uh, sine squared, and then one half squared is one fourth squared, and then I'm going to do one fourth times one half. So really, that's going to be one eighth pi sine squared x to dx. That's what I'm integrating, okay? And here's the thing. Based off what we talked about in a previous lesson, that sine of x, so this three-dimensional like figure right here is actually going to be equivalent to this three-dimensional figure right here because they're symmetrical. So instead of doing the integral from 0 to 2 pi, let's just do the integral from 0 to pi and double it because they are going to be symmetrical. So we can just double a that uh, half that volume. Okay. Okay. Um, so there, there is step four. Now, now, continuing with step four is to integrate that, obviously. So this is what I want us to do. Uh, first of all, I'm going to take out the 1 8 pi. Uh, and that's going to be 2 times the eighth is a fourth. So on the outside, I have pi over 4. Okay. Um, and um, we are left with the integral of 0 to pi of sine squared x dx. Okay. Now I'm going to take this and copy it to another page just because my iPad can be lame. And the rest of it is to just integrate this. All right, here's a little mini lesson here because we need to integrate sine squared, but we run into an issue. Good luck trying to integrate sine squared. Uh, you can't do anything with like u sub. It doesn't work. Can't, we can't let u be sine. It just doesn't work out. So there's a little identity I want us to kind of write down and sketch and highlight and keep track of. Because this is going to be this is going to be used a lot uh, from here on out when we're dealing with integration of trig. Um, it's it's uh, there's an identity for these integrations, okay? Because there's a double or uh, identity for sine squared and cosine squared. So sine squared of x is actually equal to one half one minus cosine of two x. Just kind of put that in your arsenal of of things that you might need to know for integration. And cosine is pretty much the same exact thing, but instead of minus, it's going to be plus cosine of 2x. Okay. So uh, definitely write that down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this identity to rewrite sine squared. And what we have is the integral 0 to pi. And instead of sine squared, I'm going to have 1 half, okay, and then um, um, 1 minus the cosine of 2x dx. Okay, and I can integrate that all day. First things first, though, is I, do, I would like to take out my constant 1 half. So 1 half times pi over 4 is pi over 8. 0 to pi of 1 minus cosine of 2x dx. Okay, dokey then. Um, let's integrate it. So if I integrate it, I got pi over 8. Integral of 1 is x. 
here's the thing that I want us to get good at. I can do u sub here to integrate cosine. If I do u sub, u equals 2x, du equals uh, 2 dx, and then 1 half du equals dx. But here's the thing. If you ever let u be a constant times x, like 4x, 3x, 5x, whatever it is, it's just going to come out as a fraction. So I don't want us to ever really, I want us to get to a point where we don't do u sub for a constant times x. I want us to get good at saying, okay, the integration of cosine is sine. Um, so in this case, it's going to be one half uh, uh, sine. So the integration, again, of cosine of 2x is one half sine of 2x. And if you don't believe me, take the derivative of sine of 2x. And when you do chain rule, the 2 and the 1 half will cancel out. So I'm just trying to save you a few steps for doing u substitution. All right. Okie dokie then. Um, and this is going to be integrated from 0 to pi. So I got pi over 8 integral of, and then I got pi minus 1 half sine of 2 pi minus, and then 0 minus 1 half sine of 0. Or 2 times 0, I guess. Okay, well, let's see what I get here. That's pi over 8 times uh, pi minus the sine of 2 pi is uh, 0. So that's going to be pi minus 0 minus 0 minus, and then the um, 1 half of the sine of 0 is 0. So this actually, all this ends up equaling pi squared over 8 units cubed. Okay, well, so I'm almost at the 30 minute mark, I'm at 27 minutes now. Uh, there was three examples that I did not get to, um, and they're solid examples, but I encourage you to look over these three equations and um, uh, try them if you can and look over the completed notes because they are on the completed notes. But uh, otherwise, I'm going to do these three with you in person on, uh, on Tuesday or when we get back together. So um, good luck. Try these three problems. Try to finish it. Uh, I do have uh, some uh, uh, steps here kind of written out for you to follow if you need it at the end of the uh, notes here. Uh, and they, they follow similarly to what I've said before in the past. Number one is the sketch. I didn't label this as number two, but number two is you need to figure out if it's if it's uh, x bounds or y bounds. If you're doing top minus bottom or right minus left, and all the examples I've done in the video were x bounds. There is one problem in the notes that is y bounds, so maybe try that one on your own. Um, once you do that, you try to give your area formula, and you try to get that area formula in terms of x. Now, how you do that is you plug in your base. Your base will always be top minus bottom or right minus left. And you plug that in to get it in terms of x, and then all you have to do from that point is just to integrate, okay, uh, integrate it either as a dy or dx equation, depending on if it's top minus bottom or left minus right, um, and then um, uh, integrate and solve, okay. Now, just a couple uh, cross-sectional um, uh, Equations that you might need to know, semicircle, rectangle, squares, isosceles, triangles. Um, I would probably know those four. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily, you don't necessarily need to know uh, equilateral triangle. There's a, maybe a couple examples like that, but we'll do that in class together. All right, well, anyway, um, we'll finish the rest of this together whenever I'm back and just try your best, okay? Oh, and there is a worksheet online if you want to try that for a minute. Okay, well, I'm done talking. I've reached my 30 minutes. I hope you'll have a great day, and I will talk to y'all soon.